ทุกท่านนะคะ Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the special session this afternoon. We are glad that you are here with us and that we will learn a lot through this session. So for before we get, we are going to start the session. I have some information to inform you. So first of all about the survey, make sure that you fill in the survey and also make sure that you return the survey after after the session. Secondly, I want to inform you that for this session, we're going to change the time a little bit ahead of time to let you know. Actually, the session is supposed to be two sessions, but we want to combine them in one session. So for the break time or refreshment time, we will have it after the session. Will that be okay with all of you? Maybe I'll not check. No, we will see more. Okay. So for the session, we start uh, with uh, for this afternoon is about the deeper student engagement through Moodle rooms. So today we have a special on our guests and also the speakers. They are really uh, very ready to introduce you about the Moodle. So first of all, I want to introduce the uh, honored guest, Vice President for Academy Affair, Dr. Colorado Inigo, and also the team. Okay. So before we get started, I want to inform you a little bit. So we're going to start with the overview of the LPU. And then after that, then we go deeper and in detail. So make sure you're not sleeping. Make sure you're not feeling so full of lunch and enjoy and engage with this session. So we'll talk about you and I want to get time to help you. situation that we did and that we are still doing 
in line with our e-learning or distance education program. So it's not only technology, but in all courses in our university, we always invite an industry partner to help us design curriculum and to identify the necessary competencies that are required by industries. So that's our approach no? in designing the curriculum. And BNET is one of our industry partners together with Blackboard. So now, I just want to give you a profile of our university before we go to the actual demonstration to be uh, presented by our industry partner, Mr. Raymond. No? And actual demonstration means what we've been doing in our e-learning program. So just to give you another basic information, we just started our e-learning uh, program just a year ago. And now, because of our roadmap, we are optimistic that we can pilot the full online program by 2020 or 2021. So what is important is we have to start from simple or small step. I heard that from our one of our keynote speakers. In order to create big impact, we have to start from the small chains. So just to give you a brief profile of what is our university. Can you read? Okay, taken from Mahatma Gandhi. Can you understand? This is really our our guideline when we teach, when we serve our students. So according to Mahatma Gandhi, who is a student? The student is the most important visitor of our school. He's not dependent on us, we are dependent on him. He's not an interruption of our work, he's the purpose of it. He's not an outsider of the organization, he is part of it. And the most important sentence, we are not doing him a favor by serving him. He is giving us the opportunity to do so. Remember, without the students, we are not here. Correct. And that's why we have to give excellent instruction and service to our students. And one of the services that we can provide to our students is by adopting technology, integrating technology inside the classroom. Meaning, it is inevitable, or we cannot avoid using technology in the delivery of quality instruction. So that this is really our uh, guiding principle. Because of the students, we consider the students as our primary stakeholders. So for this activity, the agenda or the topics to be taken are I am going to discuss the brief profile of our university. Then we will, uh, I will inform you of our roadmap. The, we call it My LPU e-learning portal. That's our roadmap for distance education. Then LPU success and aspirations, our dreams of achieving the roadmap. And after that, you will have the actual demonstration, the Moodle Rooms demonstration to be facilitated by uh, Mr. Raymond from Barabina. And that's and, and when he makes the presentation, that's the exact thing that we do, that we deploy in our university. So at the end of the session, as announced by uh, uh, Mr. Ronald, there will be uh, a gift 
Nokia 6. Mm -hmm. Submit the survey before and then uh, be met to a time. Okay, and whoever will be the lucky one will be given Nokia, the latest Nokia 6. With the load? Uh, no load. <laughs> No, 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 no. So, okay. Then, at the end, you may also ask questions relevant to our presentation and demonstration. There are more than 2,000 higher education institutions in the Philippines, in colleges and universities. But there is only one university established by the former president of the Philippines. There is only one. And that university is our university, Lyceum of the Philippines University, or LPU, founded by President Jose P. Laurel. So we are proud to announce that we are the only university established by the former president of the country. And uh, his son, continued the pursuit of excellence or quality excellence by uh, expanding LPU in the other provinces. The original campus was established in Manila. That was in 1952. That's why right now we're celebrating our 65th anniversary. A young university, but with so many accomplishments. So. So he expanded LPU Manila by setting up LPU in Batangas and Laguna. And the son of actually, okay, sorry. Actually, Sotero H. Laurel was also the former senator of the country. And his two sons continued the legacy. And they are now the heads of our four campuses. Namely, we have Attorney Roberto P. Laurel, so one of our leaders in LPU, and he believes in the pursuit of quality education. And another leader of LPU is Dr. Peter P. Laurel, another son of the senator. So they're already considered grandsons of the former president. And we are proud and we are really honored that the president of the Philippines now is our graduate, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. And we awarded him this year, uh, last year, as outstanding alumnus of LPU. I think you heard the president, our president now, uh, who is uh, really smart and we believe that under his leadership we can experience growth and really right now we've been experiencing uh, a six to seven percent GDP growth after two quarters and despite of the challenges and we project Ted, that the uh, Philippines under its leadership will really experience a tremendous growth in, the, in our economy, setting 6 to 7 percent as our targets. So as I, as I, uh, as I uh, announced, um, the original campus established in 1952 in Manila, then Another campus uh, was established by the former Senator Sotero Laurel in Batangas. That was in 1966. There is also a campus, a small campus in Makati, the business district of Metro Manila, and that was uh, uh, established in year 2000, which uh, houses uh, only one college, the College of Law. And Laguna, that's another campus in the south. It was founded in 2000. And the latest, Cavite, also in the south, that was established in 2008. That's located in Cavite. 
And next year, we'll have another campus in the hometown of our president, Dabao. That's the LPU Dabao campus, which will open in 2018, next year. So all of the things that we have been doing, all of the, the activities that we have been uh, deploying are based from this vision, our dream. And we are really serious in attaining this vision. Partly, we have already accomplished our vision, partly in some of the courses. So our vision is an internationally accredited university dedicated to innovation and excellence in the service of God and country. We uh, required our students and teachers and employees to internalize the vision. So when you go to our university and you ask them oh, what is our vision, they can recite it. So that's one secret. No? We require them to internalize our vision and mission statements and not only memorize, but actualize. So the requirement is all units must align their activities with our vision and mission statements. Align. No? And we have, I don't need to discuss uh, lengthily our mission statements, but um, observe that the primary mission of our university is research. Because we've been announcing to our teachers and students that you cannot deliver quality instruction without giving updates, new knowledge through research. So a teacher cannot teach without research. And we cannot innovate and excel if you don't conduct research. So that's the premise in our mission statement. So instead of putting instruction as number one, we put research as our number one activity every day. And then supported by instruction, community extension is another trifocal function of our university. So after learning, we also serve our communities. In fact, uh, one of our community programs was awarded the uh, People Program of the Year uh, two years ago by an association, professional association in the country, the People Program of the Year, no? serving and building the community of the IPs, no? the indigenous peoples. So this, uh, this is really our program, and we involve all our students and teachers in this program. So basically, we can say 100% involvement of all our students in our community extension program. Of course, we have to emphasize professionalism and values. I don't need to discuss also those statements, but uh, we have a quality policy and environment management system policy because of compliance with ISO quality management system. So we are certified uh, uh, QMS quality management system that is ISO 9001. And of course, part of the standard is we have to prepare our quality pol policy based on quality, efficient, and effective service. So likewise, we are also certified and the first school in the country which has complied with environment management system ISO standard. This is ISO 14001, the first in the Philippines. So part of the standard is setting the environment management system policy. So the core values are patterned after the name of the university, LPU. Nationalism is the core value of our university, which is uh, based on the educational philosophy of our founder, Dr. Jose P. Laurel, and then supported by justice, perseverance, and leadership. JPL is another acronym of the name of our founder, JPL, Jose P. Laurel. So for easy recall, we use this acronym so that our students and our stakeholders 
can practice our core values. So LPU and JPL, that's the core values. Well, I don't need to discuss all our accomplishments, so, but just to give you a bird's eye view of our achievements, just to give you some. Uh, our vision is to be an internationally accredited university. So as I said, partly we attain that vision because our hospitality management program has complied with the international accreditation standard, which is the ICE, T-H-E-I-Z, that stands for Tourism, Hospitality, Education, uh, Center of Excellence, based in Australia. So that's one. And we are now the second university in the Philippines, which was rated by QS, with QS stars rating. In fact, uh, we can also claim that, that we are the first Philippine non-sectarian university rated by QS with QS stars. I think Chulalongkorn knows that, huh? because Chulalongkorn is also QS rated still pursuing. You know? But one of the best universities in Thailand is Chulalongkorn and part of the QS. Right? No, that one. So one of the best, if not the best. <laughs> okay. So, and our programs, all, almost all our programs are accredited by local accrediting agency up to the highest level four. All our programs. Then our Commission on Higher Education has recognized our Lyceum of the Philippines University as autonomous university. And there are only 40, more than 40 SGIs in the country which uh, were given this autonomous status out of more than 2,000. So only 40 SGIs given by, given, uh, recognized by CHED as autonomous. And Centers of Excellence also awarded by our Commission on Higher Education in some of the programs. Okay, so we are ISO certified, uh, 14,001 and uh, 9001. And, uh, and, and we are topping the board exams because in the Philippines we have so many board examinations. Uh, so for you to be able to practice your profession in our country, you need to take the board examination. I, I know that in Thailand or in other countries, to be able to practice your profession, some professions, uh, they don't need to take the examination. But I think you can only, you're only required to take examination if you will apply in government offices. But in the Philippines, we are required to take the board exam. And LPU has produced top notchers. And we have exceeded the passing rate of the Philippine, uh, the Philippine board exams. Okay, so those are just some of our accomplishments and achievements. And secret formula, we always follow our vision and mission statements. So our mission statements are not only for display. They are not only for frames. So we always check the alignment of our mission statements so that we can attain our vision statement. So that's the secret. We always align mission statements with, even in the syllabus. In all our syllabi, we make a matrix and align the mission statements with the different topics outlined in the syllabi. So that's why every year we have realized achievements, not only inside the classroom, but the entire university. So the approach is alignment of our activities with our mission statements and core values. So not only for display. Okay. So here is our roadmap for our e-learning. We started 2016-2017, so it's still new. That was last academic year. And that time, uh, one college started, initiated the e-learning, and that, that is the college, COT is College of Technology. 
because they have the expertise. So the teachers uh, who have the expertise initiated the development of modules, the deployment of e-learning process, and after the effective deployment of the College of Technology uh, teachers, we cascaded their experiences in all programs and courses. So for this academic year, 2017-2018, we require all courses, all programs, to prepare one online course module per program. We have to do it because it's not easy to develop modules. So take note from the experience of one college, the College of Technology, wherein they have the expertise, they, we were able to learn, and they were able to teach together with our industry partner, um, uh, the Blackboard, na, the BNET. Na. They were able to assist us in the deployment of online course module, one module per program. And we will deploy it this academic year. Then, next academic year, we expect that all programs will experience the blended learning approach. And we are optimistic we can do it with the help, uh, with assistance of our industry partner. And in 2019, uh, we will deploy the online course in five selected subjects. So that's how we, we develop the e-learning. We cannot do it totally, but we have to do it using different levels or stages. And eventually, by 2020 and 2021, we can already deploy one online program in the graduate school, specifically our MBA program. If that will be the goal, after 2021, on the sixth year, our target is to deploy online learning in all academic programs. So this is our roadmap. And what we can say is you really have to make a roadmap so that for each day and year, you can set and achieve your goals. Because at, this is really our style in all our activities. Whenever we set projects, we always set a roadmap. If we cannot do it this year, we have to, to stretch it on the third, fourth, or fifth year. And based on our experiences, we, we delivered. We made it. And that's our formula in getting those re awards and recognitions. Okay. So as I said, right now, we are ready to deploy one online uh, online course module per program, and our classes will start on Monday. So our, st our students will experience a new pedagogy, a new methodology, a new tool using online learning. So for, okay. And with the assistance, as I said, uh, with the assistance of BNET, uh, Blackboard, we have selected the uh, model rooms for the following reasons. So we tested it, we piloted it, and we've proven it effective. And the best areas, or the key areas, are the hosting and support. Very effective hosting and support. Security and capabilities. Platform domains and interface. Workflow and approval process. User student features. User administrative management, learning content and creation management, communication and collaboration. Later on, you will see the actual uh, processes to be demonstrated by Mr. Raymond. So these are the key features or the benefits that we experience using Moodle Rooms. 
So as I said, we will actualize and we will present the, the, uh, the real thing uh, to be facilitated by Mr. Raymond. So in the course development, uh, the Blackboard Moodle room has supported uh, technically the development of our modules. Well, these are the contents of the course, the pedagogy of the course, and following the outcome-based education framework, we were able to, to make the necessary templates in the development of online module. So it's the entire syllabus from the objective curriculum mapping down to the grading system. Okay. And this is an example of our platform access management, which is called my LPU. So this is the, the, the site of my LPU portal. And later on, you will also see the actual. And since all our students are using the smartphone, we have a smartphone uh, mobile interface. So we do not only rely on iPad or ta ta tablet, but uh, we have already tested the interface with mobile or smartphone. So I, I don't know if Nokia 6 has the capability. <laughs> there is? It's already a smartphone? Ah, okay. Because that was my first phone, Nokia. <laughs> and that time, it was only SMS. That time, that was how many years ago? 15 to 20 years ago. That's uh, for the students. That, that was the, the, our original smartphone. Not the smart, original mobile with big gear uh, feature, no? B very big, and big battery charger. So that's the, smart, that's the phone, the mobile phone 15, 20 years ago. But now, it's already a smartphone. And all our students, based on our survey, have acquired the smartphone. Five years ago, that was our situation. And that was one of the challenges when we thought of delivering online. Because not all our students that time had the iPad. Because that time, a smartphone cannot access online learning. But this time, we tested it, and it works. So by next academic year, we are optimistic that all our students can view the online module using their smartphone. Okay. Now, this is a sample faculty interface. Uh, Actually, we have part of our team is our director of ICT. Uh, she has uh, piloted this. Uh, may I introduce Ms. Devi Galang? So she has made it, so Devi. And may I also introduce my team, Ms. Jerian per per Peran, Peran. Uh, and Mr. Alex Madlang Bayan. So they are our uh, ICT uh, leaders across the four campuses of LPU. We see to it that for each campus, there is a leader in uh, manning the deployment of our e-learning. So another sample course site. So later on, you will see it. Sample student interface. And uh, these are the pictures uh, where we had the training of teachers only two months or three months ago. So we started in Manila campus. Batangas and Laguna campuses. Kabite campus. So the, the, the approach is uh, during summer or vacation time, 
we were able to train faculty members in the preparation of the uh, online modules, of course, uh, assisted by our industry partner. So my LPU e-learning portal success and aspiration. So part of the, uh, the uh, approaches is by setting an, an organization which is responsible in the deployment of e-learning. And I am heading the team. And for each campus, there are leaders in charge of the deployment. Of course, on the side, the, uh, our consultant and our industry partner, the BNET and the Blackboard on the side. No? They're always there assisting us in terms of the technological setup. Of course, with our IT experts in the campus, uh, that facilitates no? the uh, preparation of modules as part of the pilot. So here are, we also set our e-learning goals. And this is a typical example of e-learning goals which are aligned with our mission statement. Uh, if you can, if you were able to memorize our mission statement as presented, uh, we always align all our department goals with the university mission statements. So this is the specific e-learning goals of the, the, the e-learning goals of the university. So this is again our roadmap to distance education. Target online master in business administration in the graduate school program by 2020, 2021. So for a period of five years, just for five years, we can, we can do it. We can, we can uh, integrate technology in all programs, in all subjects. And do you know that in the Philippines, not all HEIs have been doing this thing. Even state universities, example, University of the Philippines is one of the top universities in the country. Even UP has not deployed totally e-learning. So we are eyeing to be the first in the country to deliver the absolute e-learning program in all courses across four or up to five campuses. That's our target. Even in Dabao next year, that's a new campus, we will start to deploy e-learning in our new campus by next year. Because there is already, there's already a template no, that they can follow uh, uh, in Dabao campus. So here are the plans, strategies, and the different levels in the development of course modules. We have uh, classified uh, the strategies into three levels, the basic, intermediate, and advanced. We have to start from the small stage or small step or small change. And from the basic, here are the activities that we did in the development of course modules uh, as part of the basic level. So set up, of course, uh, in incorporate labels, fi files, uh, putting folders, books, and even using course management tools. These are the basic strategies that we did, and we have already prepared and completed the basic. So that's the reason why we can deploy the online uh, module next academic year. The next stage is the intermediate level and we have also achieved these uh, strategies, the second stage of the deployment of our e-learning. And ultimately, the advanced stage. 
we have not achieved, we have not deployed the advanced stage, but we will target it maybe next year, and later on, uh, you will also experience an application or a tool which is part of the advanced stage, and that is the learning analytics report. So right now, we have not achieved and we have not integrated advanced, and we foresee that the analytics, the learning analytics report will be part of the module. We have seen it, and we can say that it can really aid and assist us in monitoring the competencies of all students using rubrics. So that's the learning analytics, and Mr. Raymond will demonstrate that later on. And this will be part of the advanced stage of our module. So here we are present. These are the prime movers of our e-learning roadmap. Uh, again, you can give our team a big round of applause. <laughs> Taken this morning in our hotel. <laughs> so. And with our uh, partners, the, the, the Blackboard uh, partners, we can say that uh, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. We have selected this wisdom because not all our teachers are young. Not all are millennials. We have teachers uh, still teaching at the age 70, 75. And they can still learn this new curve. So that's a, a good, a good, uh, a good uh, development. Through leadership, we can encourage, we can inspire our not old, senior teachers to adopt the technology. So this morning, when you heard the statement of our keynote speakers, it's really, I, I would validate their statements that innovation and excellence would mean inspiration, setting role modeling, and just inspire the teachers and the students to excel. And they've been doing it, even our senior teachers. And part of our framework in the success, in the deployment of our e-learning is the adoption of the OBE systems perspective. This is taken from, uh, from the Malcolm Baldridge education framework. We've, we've been doing it and we tested this framework. So result observed that category, there are seven categories. Category one is leadership, category two is strategic planning, three, customer focus, four, measurement, analysis, and knowledge management, five, workforce focus, six, process management, and seven, results. So the reason why we have all those achievements and results, because we are using the framework, Malcolm Baldridge. And why OBE? systems perspective because the results are outcomes. So under OBE, we do not only concentrate on teaching learning outcome. Traditionally, schools, not only in the Philippines, but in the region, only focus on teaching learning outcome. So just to inform you, in our experience, it is not only teaching learning outcome that you have to deploy it should be a system OBE framework. Meaning, there must be outcome in budgetary and financial to deliver quality teaching and learning. So you have management and leaders must focus on the, the, the outcome related to budgetary and financial. Another outcome is there must be effective an efficient workforce outcome. So we should also expect that the, 
that the employees, the faculty members, are motivated, encouraged to do quality work. Because even you have very good curricula, but the workforce not motivated and not encouraged, we cannot get the results. So that's what we call workforce outcome. Another outcome is leadership outcome, which is considered the most important outcome. That's why category one is leadership. So when you check the standard and the framework, by the way, this is a universal framework. It's not only uh, the work of LPU. If you are going to search the, uh, the standard, it's a Malcolm Baldrige standard, it is a universal template. Objective to achieve performance excellence and get the outcomes. So in our experience, it's really leadership that can deliver the results. You see? So if you have weak leader, do not expect results. If you have strong leadership, expect the results. This is applicable in any organization, whether government, NGO, school, or any organization. We should always develop leaders. That's why leadership is a very important subject in any program, not only in the graduate school. So the, uh, just to explain briefly the framework, there are seven categories, and these three are called leadership triad. Leadership, strategic planning, customer focus, because the leaders has to set the direction through planning, and the leader has to identify the requirements of customers and satisfy customer needs. This is what you call leadership triad. And then in the middle, you have the arrow connecting the results triad. So you can only achieve the results with your effective and efficient workforce and with effective quality and efficient process to deliver the results. So when you connect the two, the leadership triad and the results triad, that's what you call effective OBE. And measured by this category. So there must always be measurement, analysis, so that you can produce knowledge management using the technology. So by the way, uh, Malcolm Baldridge has integrated technology in measuring and analyzing all the processes. So I'm advising you to check the framework and try your best uh, to use it in your, in your school or organization. So with that, uh, after my brief presentation, we can ask uh, our expert, our industry partner, to demonstrate what we have experienced. And before I end, I would like to, to give you another wisdom, uh, which, is, uh, which is also my personal philosophy. I've been practicing this every day. And this is quality. It's just an attitude. Again, quality is just an attitude of mind. And if you can also recall the statements of our keynote speakers this morning, if you want to deliver innovative e-learning approach, it comes from inside your attitude. So even you have very good curricula and framework, but the individuals are not inspired and they don't have the right attitude, you cannot be successful in the deployment of e-learning. So e-learning is not only technology. It's not only technology, even you have the best men, but not motivated, and there is no positive inside, you cannot deliver the positive outside. So remember, quality is just an attitude of mind. And every day, it is based on the belief that you can do things better today than yesterday. And that's, that's really our mindset. That's innovation. And better tomorrow than today. So thank you very much, and good luck in your journey, the e-learning journey. Thank you.
So, so while my colleague Raymond is setting up um, to show you the platform that Dr. Corando mentioned and also some of the uh, key benefits that he discussed, um, I just wanted to check whether anyone would like to ask Dr. Corando any questions regarding uh, LPU at this stage. Um, okay, so, so one, one of the reason why we thought sharing this story would be very interesting for the group is what Dr. Corando mentioned is how fast that they could make that decision and Monday, come Monday, they will be launching a new program. And the, the journey that he mentioned is, is of course a start for LPU, but is, is quite smooth in their case in how it's been taking off. And partly of that is because the solution that they are uh, deploying, it's a SaaS solution, so everything is delivered from the cloud. So today we'll be accessing the same platform so you can explore and see how fast the speed might be uh, from a user point of view. Second of all is, uh, as they mentioned, they have done a lot of planning during this time in terms of curriculum design as well as uh, developing the course module. And part of that um, is also our, our team's help to give the, the institution a lot of support, not only for them to figure out what they want to do online, but giving them a lot of suggestions and that comes as part of the engagement model that, that we support um, uh, for LPU. May I also check before we start the next part, which is roughly about uh, 40, another 40 minutes or so. Um, I would like to check in terms of the audience, how, how many of you might be in the technical team, the IT side, or most of you are students as well as faculty members, instructors, because we want to focus on the areas that might be more interesting to you rather than showing you technical uh, settings that might not be relevant. So we make it as meaningful as possible. So if, if not a lot of uh, technical resources, I mean uh, representative, we might not cover the technical side and we can discuss that anytime as you need. But we will focus on the teaching and learning side from a faculty point of view and also what the student might see so that we can understand how how LPU is addressing their focus on student service uh, through the solution as well. Raymond? Yeah. A very good afternoon. Um, fabulous afternoon to all distinguished guests here, and especially to Dr. Conado, the Vice President for Academic Affairs for LPU and his professional team of 